behind me is the coach for the cheerleaders. And do you know that cheerleading is about spelling? <laughs> yes, it is. So we're going to do that. So everybody, give me a J!
talking to Jesus. There I'll be talking to Jesus for the rest of my life.
So I woke up every morning for the last three weeks with holy and anointed one singing over me. And, uh, and it's funny because we've sang it about the last three weeks. Um, and before that was one we, and I, I think that's a kiss for Papa. Come on. I believe that Papa gives us kisses. All I believe that he gives us kisses all the time if we're paying attention. Yeah. Because if we're paying attention, every little detail of our life is, just, is in his control. Come on. Whether it's something we like or we don't like, it's still under his control if we give it to him. I woke up with shingles this week. It was not on my list of things to do. I said, oh, I don't want to do this, Jesus. But Jesus gives you the grace to walk through it. And once again, he gives you the grace to walk through it, and he gives us Papa kisses all throughout the week. So remember, when you're having a, when things don't seem like they're going right, you still have to give it to him because he still has it in control. Right? He has the good and the bad in his control. Right? Amen. Kids, can you come join me, ages 4 through 12? He's almost 12. I'm almost 60. Does that count? Not quite 12, though. I hit 12 a long time ago. I don't remember that far back. Nice. That's fashionable, Bryn. A new hat? We have a new hat today. Does anybody have a memory verse to share? Judah? Can you pull in Leviathan with a hook? Job 41 1. <laughs> oh Lord, our Lord, how many things are in all the earth? Psalm 118. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Awesome job. Anybody else? You got one? No. You just want to say good morning? Come on then. Extend your hands to our kids. They do have children's church today. They're going to go back with Karen. So we bless Karen as, as she teaches. Hey, Bryn. Drummer girl. Should we call you drummer girl? Father, thank you for these kids. Thank you for all that they are and all they will be, all that they are, all that they will be, and everything that you have created them to be. They are powerful. They are controlled. They are good listeners. They are miracle makers and promise keepers. And daymakers, yeah, we have to get the daymakers in there at all times. All right, go to Children's Church. Go find Karen. Bryn, mom's that way. I think the kids had a little extra sugar today in the brunch. Sorry, Karen. All right, uh, all of our normal events, Bible Blitz with Ruth, Monday nights, we're in Ruth, chapter 2 this week, and men's revival group, are you having a revival group this week, Mike? No? Maybe. He, they don't know yet. All right, please hold. Sisters in Christ, daily at 8 o'clock in the morning, um, I do catch that as often as I can, even if I can't be there for all of it, it is amazing. It will really bless you. Those links are all on our Facebook page and on our website and in the text message that we have. Um, we've already talked about the gaps. If you know that you're, you're led to be in one of those gaps, fill the gap for us. Um, soundboard, PowerPoint, meals, coffee ministry, children's church helpers. Karen's back there by herself most of the time. So if you can help us do that, October 13th through 15th is Came to Believe Midwest Retreats. October 15th, Eric Robel is going to be here to bless us from the pulpit. 
we're excited about that. And um, the 28th is our fall festival from 10 to 2. We have worship teams coming from other churches, and we have a chili cook-off, bake sale, this we usually do. Um, anyway, it's kind of like what we, do, uh, what we usually do. If you've been here before, it's a good time. It's a great time of fellowship if you just come and hang out with everybody. Um, so that's from 10 to 2 on October 28th. And today after the service, we will have cake for um, pastors, pastors Higgins for Pastor Appreciation Sunday. So join us afterwards. Sariva did make a cake for us, and um, thanks for everybody that chipped in for the brunch today. I appreciate the help. And um, offering. Dale, do you have a helper? Chris, all right. We have text to give, Venmo, baskets. The baskets are coming around. If you need an envelope, they're in the windows. If you'd like a tax-deductible receipt, mail it to Living Word by snail mail or PayPal. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you, you do for us, all that you give us, and thank you for allowing us to bless you back. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor Sean. Oh, Father, help me to enter into your rest this morning as we dive deep into revelation from you. There's a word this morning for each and every one of you. If you can get through my uh, squirrel distractions and rabbit trails, I think you'll be able to find it. So it's God's delight to hide things, and it's a king's delight to seek them out. So my message is like a where's Waldo. you got to find what's in it for you. <laughs> I don't even know where to start this morning. I'm so pumped up. I mean, I love, you see all the moms, they're kind of like, oh, is my kid being too distracting? It's like, no, they're not like kids. She goes, I go, hey, they're doing worship wrestling. And uh, Cass goes, oh, is that a thing? <laughs> I'm new to all this, she says, you know. And uh, I go, no, they're just being kids. And kids can be kids here, but the coolest thing is, is you know where kids learn? When they play. And to play in the middle of worship, wow, rather than in the back by themselves, I mean, what a better place to play than in the presence of the Holy Spirit while their family is praising the Lord all around them. Come on. You don't know what happens in those moments. See, it's an actual representation, I think, of Colossians 3, 2. Don't look at the natural distractions around you, but keep your eyes focused on heavenly realities happens in all of our lives. we got all this stuff going on, but if we can see what God's actually doing, we're not going to miss out on this powerful encounter we can have. And I believe those kids, we only get them out here for 40 minutes at Children's Church in an hour and a half for worship and, and fellowship. They got t countless hours in the world. I have to have faith that the time that they're in here is more powerful than the time they're out in the world, no matter how short it is. Because we have world-changing, unbelievably beautiful little gifts running around. <laughs> I just wanted to share it this morning. It just was on my heart because I hate in church when you can feel the cringe. <gasps> the kids are being loud. One of them threw a ribbon. <laughs> One of them's got a bloody nose. <laughs> no, that does happen. When, uh, when they get wrestling and stuff, we do go say, hey, this whipping each other with the flags. That's not worship. We're just recreating the crucifix. No, no, that's not part of, that's not part of worship. But kids will surprise you too, because we watch The Chosen every night. Uh, we have a big sleep slumber party at our house. The little kids got two beds in our room, and we all sleep in the same room and have just a big slumber party, because guess what? This is America, and I can do whatever I want. And I don't, uh, I only get 18 years with them, so we decided we want to just, you know, do it the way we do it. And so we watch The Chosen every night, and we do a little bit of worship. And Bryn, she was like, when, it, when is the crucifixion? And I started to get kind of like, you know, is, do I got like a little psychopath on my hands? Like, what do you, why, you, you're, you're sick, you're five, why do you want to get to the crucifixion so bad? And she said, she surprised Libby and I both, she goes, because I want to see how close I really am to Jesus. From out of the mouth of babes, I'm in the bathroom like, oh, God, I repent. I don't know what's going on. 
Um, cool. Uh, so this morning, Tim came up to me with a testimony I really wanted him to share because, I, I, I mean, this is, this is real life, real life situation and powerful because if anyone knows where some of us have come from, this is a really powerful testimony. And I think all testimonies are worthy of being shared. And I think all testimonies mean a lot. And because we've overcome by the blood of the Lamb in the power of our testimony. So, Tim, come on up and share your testimony this morning. Give him a round of applause. All right, Sean made me tell you this story. Anyway, it's kind of embarrassing to me, but it's very powerful. Um, I've been raising my kids for the past seven years, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to, like, explore going out with women or whatever. And so I finally, like, I was eating dinner with Sean and Chris one day, and they said, well, if you don't go out there and find one, you're not going to find any. So I joined a, web a website, and uh, not one of them cheap ones. I went to eHarmony and just see if you can get because I can't go out and find them. And uh, I met up with this girl, and... Anyway, we had talked for a few times. She gave it over to my house, and Savannah gave her the 10th degree. And, and she got kind of scared, but she hung in there, because you know how Savannah can be if you know her. Anyway, uh, then we set it up, and she had mentioned the S word to me, like she wanted to do it to keep me in, or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, I thought, well, as long as I've been without it, it might be a great thing. You know, it might be a good idea. And then I started thinking to myself, I prayed, because I always pray, and, and Jesus was like telling me in the back of my mind, this is probably not a good idea. <laughs> so I, uh, I drove all the way down there. She lives in Eau Claire. And I prayed, and, uh, and when I got in the house, everything just felt odd. Everything felt forced, and I waited. We ate some pizza, and we sat down, and I, I told her, because like, she was all ready to do whatever I wanted her to do, and she wanted to do it, but it felt wrong. And I said, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to hang out, and we're going to get to know each other. I said, back in the past, all I did was start relationships like this. And I said, you have that. And then when that's done, you have nothing because you don't know each other. So I, I said, we're not going to do it. I said, if this works or it doesn't work, I said, it's not going to be like that. And uh, I just really thank God for being in my life and be able to like do something that powerful to stop me from doing something that's very powerful and wrong. You know, if it's not done the right way, it's the wrong way. And I, I just don't want to live. I have kids involved, and not, even if I didn't, my journey with God is not like that anymore. So I just thought I'd share that with you. It's a difficult thing we run into. I would just suggest you pray if you ever get there. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've known Tim for 12 years, maybe a little more, and so I've watched him kind of come along this journey with God because this Tim is totally a uh, new Tim than who I knew 12 years ago uh, when he was still trying to shed some of his old life and shed some of his old character defects and some of those things that, would, uh, that, that we carry with us when we become saved. And so to watch him grab on to God's hand and just, just do the journey, do the, eight years ago, Tim wasn't where Tim is today. Six years ago, Tim wasn't where Tim is today. Two years ago, Tim isn't where Tim is today. But today he is where he is, and he has this victory and this powerful encounter with God that causes him to make the right choice and to go on. And he, he feels proud to have done that and to have walked through that because he grabbed onto God's hand. He got close to God. See, we tend to think that it's about the destination. When I'm perfect, then, when I can do these things, then, God's not God doesn't care about the destination in that sense. He is the destination. Yeah, come on. He is the destination because when you can get your hand into his hand, you start to taste and see that the Lord is good and he starts to lead you into a higher way of living that produces life in your life instead of death. How many people have made the wrong choice, entered into a relationship, all based on the wrong reasons, and five years later you wasted a whole bunch of time and you're trying to think of ways you can get out? We've been there. We've been there. So, and that's, the, that's a common misconception in Christianity is that it's about our behavior. It's never been about our behavior. In fact, all through the Old Testament, 
our stories where somebody's heart posture and somebody's um, uh, faith in God totally usurps a rule that he had just spelled out. Something he had just said, hey, we're not going to do it this way. And then five, six chapters later, somebody with the right heart posture is completely doing it wrong and God's okay with it. God completely lets it slide. If you look at the priests in the Jerusalem temple, they are given a complete list of ways that they need to serve God when this temple opens. It's like you've prepared for the last year for this church having a grand opening and some of you are ushers and some of you are coffee makers and some of you are on the worship team and some of you are preachers and some of you are helping people park in the parking lot and the doors open up, the Spirit of God lands on the place and the priests were unable to minister. They were just underneath the glory. That's God sometimes. He got them prepared for the job only to come in and completely usurp them with his presence and a deeper level of relationship. That's what God will do in your life every time you grab his hand. Every time you grab his hand and pull him closer. Make him the destination. Because what's the first thing that we do sometimes when we make a mistake? Is we turn from him. I can't look at you. And he's looking at you like, you don't think I've ever seen that before? I've been around for a long time. Yeah. I've dealt with a lot of people. Like, come on. I've seen that six times already in the last five minutes. But it is common to go, God, when I get back on track, then I'm worthy of the relationship that I see Sean has, or Libby has, or Chris has, or my mom has, or my grandma, or Leroy and Barb. If I can get back on the path, then I'm worthy to go out and actually help push the kingdom forth. But that's not the case with Jesus. Because the only way you can become empowered to... Um, move forward in his... The only way you can become empowered to be who he wants you to be is to hang out with him. You can't do it apart from him. You become what you behold. Uh, uh, Colossians talks about that. You become transformed by what you behold. So if you're not spending time with God because you're making mistakes, then you're never going to break the mistakes because... God's the answer in the empowerment to the mistake that you're facing. And it doesn't matter if it's addiction. It doesn't matter if it's sex. It doesn't matter if it's pornography or eating something you, you've tried to give up or self shaming yourself or anxiety or depression or guilt. It doesn't matter where you are. G hanging out with Jesus is the solution to that problem. He's the solution. He's the empowerment that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. So it's obvious that the devil's going to say, you suck. You can't hang out with Jesus because he doesn't suck. So when you don't suck, then you can hang out with Jesus who also doesn't suck. But that doesn't work because until we hang out with Jesus, we suck. <laughs> Theology of suckology. That's my... <laughs> you can quote me on that. I can actually name the, name the sermon that. Let's go with that. Jesus comes out on the Sermon of the Mount and he says two of my favorite Bible verses. One is 633. Seek first the kingdom of God in all of its righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Everything. And then he says in uh, Matthew 5, 6, which is prior, he goes, this is in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. It's a promise. So Jesus has laid out an all-you-can-eat buffet, and all you have to do is be hungry to eat at the table. He doesn't ask you to wear anything. He doesn't ask you to show up in a certain way. He doesn't say once you've been saved a year. He just says, here's your inheritance. Hunger and thirst for me and the way that I live, and I will fill you up with it. You will get what, you, what you're seeking. You will find what you're looking for. And now 12 years later, you'll be sharing in front of a church how God did for you what you could not do for yourself. Because that's the beauty of grace. That's the beauty, of the, that's the power in his name is that he can take something that was worth nothing and make it into the best thing he's ever created. And that's us. Oh, I'm losing some of you guys. Some of you guys are lost.
2 Peter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. You've got everything at your disposal. Just got to believe in it. Here's where it gets crazy. Through these he has given us his precious and magnificent promises so that through them you, you, me, may become partakers of his divine nature. You get to be like him. Now that you have escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. You are on a constant mission as a Christian to become more and more like Jesus every single day of your life. That is the goal, that is the takeaway, that is the destination, that is the promise that in you is Jesus Christ, the hope of glory to this world. You are on a mission to become more and more like the one you behold, transformed by the renewing of your mind, realizing that the old you is dead and the new you is risen to new life with Jesus Christ. He took you on the cross and said, hey, this version of humanity, it's the psychology version. So we're going to put this one in the grave and with me you will raise to new life and become a new creation and empowered to actually be me on this earth. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is be hungry. All you have to do is come and search me out and find me because I will provide you a way to become that if you get close to me. If you get close to me. See, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a danger, though. Because one of the ways God kind of baits us in is, uh, and it's not a bait, but he wants you to taste and see that he's good. So for some of us out there, he'll give you a little sample of the product. Yeah, you laugh. The cleanest, most like non-off-the-path guy get, got the joke. He'll let you sample the product. And say, this is the kingdom. Because what gets you in in the natural mind is like, I put my faith in Jesus and a check showed up in the mail. That's where you guys got to follow me. That's where you got to follow me. How's, who, how many of you have had a Jesus do something like that for you? Yeah. Attached to that event in the natural is a supernatural abundance of peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. You did receive a natural thing that caught your attention, but in the supernatural, your spirit came alive because you just had an encounter with God. Even at the smallest level, he got your attention naturally and supernaturally inside of you. You got to experience what he's really trying to get you to taste and see, which is his goodness. So then comes a time in your walk where four, five, six months or years later, he's asking you to do something that's not like getting a check in the mail, that's challenging, that is like Tim's talking about, to make a choice that's something you don't want to do, and it still carries that same supernatural peace and joy and abundance. And you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and because you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, you know you can trust Him, and you dive deeper into relationship with Him. You guys following me? That's why the natural response has to be, I screwed up, Lord, if this is how you want me to live, I'll keep living like this, but if not, it's, it's yours. It's yours, because I, I don't have the power to defeat this in my life, but you do on the cross. And we keep trying to live new creation existence with the old way of doing it. You didn't have the power to do it then. You don't have the power to do it now. But he does and he will. All you have to do is let him and trust him. That maybe it's not going to happen today. Maybe it's not going to happen in six months. But the more you hang out with him, eventually that thing inside of you that's been driving you nuts will die. Because it already died on the cross. It's just trying to catch up in the natural. Can I get an amen? But you have to desire him more than the products of him. You have to desire Jesus in your life more than the blessings that come from him. Christ with me. Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, 
Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. I need that more than I need anything else this world can offer me. If I'm rich or poor, sick or dying, if I have everything I could ever want or no dream of mine has ever come true, that is the realest thing in me and has to be the realest thing in me because that's what changes me. That's what causes me to fall more in love with him and that's what causes me to find Finally become a partaker of his divine nature, which all that stuff I just spoke about won't even matter when that comes true in your life. Oh, man. Man. We talk about seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, right? That's You guys have heard me on that. I mean, if... if if the Bible literally says seek first something, I think that's probably what I'm going to spend my life seeking first. The Bible also says in Romans uh, 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink. It's talking about laws. You can apply that to anything. The kingdom of God is not about laws, but it is a realm of the Holy Spirit filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. A lot of people read the New Testament and go, you will not inherit the kingdom of God, and they think it's a matter of heaven and hell. I just got some news flash for you. Jesus didn't talk a lot about heaven and hell in those terms. He didn't preach a really strong message about, hey, hold up here until your life's over, and then you'll be in eternity one day, and everything will be good. In fact, he's saying, like, now we're taking that thing that you're waiting for off in the distance, and we're pulling it into today. And it's going to be hard. <laughs> like It's going to mess with your head. But we're bringing it into today. He, he does tell the guy on the cross who's next to him that say, hey, you'll be with me in, uh, in the promised land. Or you'll, you'll be with me in eternity soon. Which would be a cool thing to hear from Jesus right before you die. You know, a little assurance. This dude has no idea what's going on. And in fact, Bill Vanderbush, this, I'm going to take this side note because I think it's funny. Um, Bill Vanderbush says that that dude gets into heaven and angels are like, hey, why are you here? I don't know. The guy on the center cross told me I could come. You know what I mean? No idea why he's there, you know? But, um, dang it, I shouldn't have taken that path because now I totally forgot I was talking. Oh. <laughs> it's a realm that's already here. The spirit realm is already here. So the kingdom of God, according to Paul in Romans, is, is, is the realm of the Holy Spirit filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. That's where you can live when the world around you doesn't match up. If, if you're looking for a bank account or a retirement fund or the right girlfriend or the right job or the right place to live to be your realm of righteousness, peace, and joy, there are times you can find that here. You get a big paycheck. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy, but that ain't the joy that the Lord's talking about. That realm of joy exists whether my world is falling apart or my world is succeeding in the good and in the bad. I can live in, I can inherit the kingdom realm of God everywhere I go. But I got to seek first. I got to be hungry for it. It's got to be about Jesus and not about the products of Jesus. It's got to be about, hey, I want you. I want you. Paul also says, though, the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulteresses, nor men and women who submit or perform homosexual acts, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And I want to stop here a second because this is a really touchy subject in the church because the church doesn't necessarily know how to handle these verses because in the end they've judged those people. They've judged them and said, you guys are all... Um, going to hell. That's not what the verse says. The verse doesn't say that. In fact, you, at some point or another, can find yourself in every single one, in, in one of those people in the list. At some point, you've been a thief or greedy, a drunkard, a verbal abuser, anybody not like just got mad and said something they shouldn't. I mean, the list includes all of us. But what Jesus is saying and, and what the Holy Spirit says when he starts to bring these lists out is to say, this side brings life. And this side brings death in the moment. In the moment, in, in your current existence. Jesus didn't come with a bunch of rules that make us all better than everybody else. What Jesus came with was a bunch 
of actual principles that makes our life more fulfilled and full than, than dead like the world around us. So what he's saying is if you, if you choose to work in one of these things, then in that moment, you're not going to inherit the righteousness, peace, and joy. If I, let's take this thief one. If I decide that the IRS doesn't need to get paid everything that it owes because I have reasons to believe that they are just a corrupt government and, you know, I work hard for my money. So I'm going to lie a little bit. Maybe I'm going to say I gave $20,000 to charity this year rather than just ten. People do that all the time, but that makes me a thief. Therefore, in my financial situation, I will not have the kingdom of God reigning in that moment right. or in that part of my life. Relationships. If you're jumping into relationships like Tim, you're not inviting, like not like Tim, the opposite <laughs> of Tim. You're not going to find the kingdom of God at the middle of that relationship. Adulterers. Nothing good comes out of cheating on your husband or wife. Can I get an amen? I don't even think we have to go down that one. But if, if you in the moment say, I'm going to get closer to Jesus before I make any decision. If in the moment you say, I'm going to dive head first. For me, what I do is I just put on the scripture with no, re no reason or rhyme behind it. I'll just put my headphones in and just play it. Because I know it's the Word of God and I know it's speaking to my spirit. And in the moment, I need to shut my mind off, even if it's just for five minutes. Put on a worship song. Anything that you can do that gets you closer to God in the moment, you'll start to, you start to listen to the Bible like that, you already have natural understanding of what you should and shouldn't do, and you don't even need to be asking God about it because it's already alive in your spirit. Ooh. So that's the dichotomy of this whole grace thing, though. Because on one hand, it's going to empower you. But on the other hand, if you end up in a real grace-filled church, you're going to find a lot of freedom to do whatever you want. I'm not the sin police. I don't go around checking who's with who and who did what and how many times you lied this week or anything. We don't even actually care about that. That's between you and God. It says the Holy Spirit convicts. That's your relationship with God because I, I, that's beyond my pay grade and if that's the case I got a I got a long list of my own stuff that I'd have to show to you guys that I don't really want to you know because it's not the point the point of Christianity is not about becoming good boys and girls who can dot all the I's and cross all the T's the point is about becoming more like Jesus and when you become more like Jesus you can then help somebody who used to be where you were without judging them. One of the best, most, uh, one of the greatest quoted Bible verses in all of Scripture is John 3.16. I bet you somebody can tell it to me right now. Wow, just so excited about it, guys. My God. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But my actual favorite in that is John 3, 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And when we become more like Jesus, we begin to actually start saving the world. Yes. What the, what the addict community needs more places like this and more things like came to believe where they're not getting judged and condemned, but they're getting truth at the same time. It's righteous and relevant. See, you have to be righteous if you want to move in the power of God, but you also have to be relevant. And I heard this from Joel Brooks, and he said, a church or an organization with no power, only way they can be relevant is to try to look like the world. So maybe their worship is a lot more rocky. Maybe their pastor's a lot more put together than I am, whatever it is. But what really needs to happen to be relevant is you have to have a solution for the world's problem. And we have the solution for the world's problem. So we need more things that are righteous and relevant. Amen. And then you're going to see things like the LGBTQ community actually coming to a place of freedom. 
Because all the church does right now is throw stones at them. All the church does right now is judge them and condemn them. And kick. We've had trans people here, you guys don't even know it. And I don't want them to get stuck in living a lesser life than what the Bible has called them to live, but I also don't want them to never find Jesus, the one who's going to change them, just because I told them they weren't good enough to come in our doors, come around us. There's so many things like that, groups like that, that are looking to be saved. That are, it's like our trumpet should be, hey, guess what? God loved you, and he wants you to rock. Like, like let's go. And he's, he, he wants you to stop living in the, in the miry clay that you've been living in. But the way you got to do that is by loving first, accepting him first. You're not going to kick down the door, boom, hey, Jesus is here, and uh, you guys are great. They're going to be like, get out of here, weirdo. <laughs> like, yeah, I know they call you, they call, uh, People like me, charismaniacs. And so that's, that's what I do. Libby's a charismatic with a seatbelt on. That's what I've... <laughs> I'm the charismaniac. So... Oh, you know... Want to land this plane? I've got so many... I mean, you guys, I've got... I'm just like bubbling with the fact that like there's, there are people out here who are going to catch the whip of what I'm saying. Jesus says several times throughout the Scripture, with those, those who have ears, hear and respond. Those who have ears, hear and respond. We look at our life... Um, we don't see our life actually the way that I think God sees it. Because it, how do I want to word this? In, in the parable of the talents, one guy gets ten, one guy gets five, one guy gets one. So a person with one talent might look at a guy with ten and say, well, I can never do that. But all God wants you to do is take what he gave you and double it up. He doesn't need a one-talent life to look like a ten-talent life. He doesn't need a ten-talent life to look like a five-talent life. He wants you to influence whoever it is around you. If you are at Anderson Windows and you have 20 people in your department, you should be a thermostat there telling them that... Yeah, I don't want to get going too... I don't want to get going too hard on Tim. If you... Wherever you go, you carry the solution for the world's problems. And without going too far down the road, you just got to get yourself girded up so you're not offended by every one of them that rubs up against you. Ooh... Ooh, well, I don't like the way they talk to me. So what? They hit Jesus and said, prophesy, which one of us hit you? That's pretty cold. That's like a whole different kind of gang stomping. You know, tell us who prophesied. Prophesy who hit you. It's like the real answer is like probably all of you, like this is a no brainer. Plus Jesus did know, so it was kind of, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I digress far too. I'm killing that squirrel, sacrificing on the altar, burnt incense to the Lord. I have to, or we're going to be here all day. So I want you guys to stand with me. And I, I want to sing that one chorus we were singing where it was like, Jesus, Jesus, friend, friend. It's not, I'm not, it's not like, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Somebody who can sing it, sing it. <laughs> Closer than Yeah, just stay on this chorus. Stay on this chorus.
Yes, let this just let this just flood over us right now. Keep stay on this course. Do you know there's more power in what we're seeing right now than the largest rocket that NASA ever built? There's more power in the name of Jesus than anything that has ever existed. And right now it's just hovering over us. It's just hovering in this moment. And for some of you, we are going to experience those physical healings you were looking for in the beginning of this service. But for some of you, there's chains breaking off your heart. There's just stuff breaking off your heart right now in the name of Jesus is because God is looking for you to get fully alive in him. If you're having an experience, you're you're welcome to stay in it. Those of you, if you you're done, we're done. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Woo. I guess we're having birthday cakes or or pastor cake or something.